have you guys seen all this stuff happening with Twitter? It's pretty wild, isn't it, right? And the reason why I think it's pretty wild, obviously you got this first story about this fake Eli Lilly Twitter account, which claims um, insulin was free, which then led to a stock to fall 4.37%, which then led to you know Eli, <laughs> Eli Lilly sorry, coming out and categorically denying that insulin would be for free. All this kind of stuff has happened. It's like a, it's kind of like an example of law of unintended consequences. Um, Elon sets up this idea or has this idea in his head that he wants to make um, verifications. Um, what, what do you call it? He wants to make verifications democratic in some way is that democratic it's not the right way option not a white word to say but i don't know i don't know what the word is maybe egalitarian i don't know what the right word is but there's a word for it but essentially elon musk wants to make verifications for all the thing he doesn't like the idea of verifications being a status symbol and it kind of denoting that somebody is of a higher creed or a lower creed if they've got a flipping sort of verify thickness name which i definitely agree especially on twitter especially with some of these journalists they literally walk around as if they own the place because they've got a blue tick next to their name as if everything they say is complete fact or as if they're any smarter than you or I, which is nonsense. So the fact that he wanted to um, make it available to all for eight dollars, which is was amazing, but he didn't anticipate all the trolls going out and making accounts of legitimate businesses with a tick next to their name and really causing a lot of flipping hassle right and really kind of you know flipping the script and making things really difficult in terms of him running the company with all the other stuff he has to do so clearly this was something that wasn't necessarily something they kind of saw happening i like the apology from no i like the clarification sorry from eli um lily they didn't actually say in the entire thing that insulin wouldn't be free and they didn't actually even say the word insulin. They just said, we apologize to those who have been served misleading messages from a fake Lily account. Our official account is LilyPad. So they didn't even acknowledge the free insulin thing. They just tweeted that, which is absolutely incredible. Really, really good way of kind of, a po no, it's a good way of clarifying without actually clarifying. I love that. Um, and then of course you've got um, this obviously said so you know the fake uh, affected their stocks which is pretty crazy um, we go here it says um, courtesy of Mashable um, we, this is a fake tweet it says we're excited to announce that insulin is now free and I had published by a blue verification check and using Musk's new verification blue subscription option the account has since lost its blue check mark and gone private over the course of a few hours the insulin producer saw a 4.5 percent drop in his stock and had to issue a clarification on his official twitter account at lily pad in a single moment um in a week of blue check mark induced stress what began with an innocuous impersonation of sports figures quickly descended into a free-for-all of impersonation and misinformation the practice isn't new for the social media app but more like a blue check enhanced riff on a now it's the long established Twitter joke form. One which she's users trying to get their account and username to look as close to the real thing with just a blue check standing as misinformation way and it didn't work always. But even then, the democratization of the blue tick is ex is exasperating Twitter's misinformation problem, which is something I probably didn't think was probably would happen. Eli Lilly and company was just one target of several corporate government imposters, including fake accounts for defense manufacturer Lockheed Market, Lo Lockheed Martin, sorry, oil company bp and produce distributor chiquita absolutely incredible so big up everybody that trolled these big companies and got them to shake in their pants a job well done but it's just incredible to see how difficult it is in real time to run a company especially one like twitter especially one that's kind of like probably got his own issues beforehand that didn't really that weren't maybe spoken about too much but the fact that elon's coming in and somebody that a lot of people at twitter probably ideologically and politically don't agree with or don't like in general as a person is definitely going to show us in real time just how difficult it is to make these things work when you don't have people on your side on a political basis which is crazy to think about it in business it? it's crazy to think in business you need to be politically aligned with your staff members um uh with the people that use your app in order to kind of service them properly it's very strange because you would imagine if you were a real killer sniper of a businessman but you happen to be a conservative and you bought twitter you should be able to run it the way you deem the way you deem fit maybe your political you know leanings would impact certain things but overall your ability to run a business shouldn't be, you know, dependent on who you vote. If you vote red or blue, it doesn't necessarily matter. But in America or maybe the world in general, 
um, staff members, the public overall who use your app, um, the critics, the media, they definitely put a whole lot of stick, a lot of, you know, a lot of stake in it. And clearly a lot of them are not a fan of Elon and they are doing everything in their power to, ex you know, emphasize and, and, you know, and basically highlight all the things that he's doing wrong. And then of course the stuff inside the company isn't, isn't helping either. All the leaks that are coming out to the press also are not going to help things, but you know, him himself isn't helping things either. He put out a tweet recently where he said, Oh, Twitter is accounting for a major part of the web traffic or some nonsense like that. And then a Twitter bot that they have basically clarified under his tweet that that wasn't true, which obviously is super embarrassing. And he had to delete it, but didn't offer a clarification. So clearly, he's not helping himself in this matter but it's quite interesting to see in real time how difficult it is to actually run these what would you call them these kind of woke companies basically that's what twitter is right these type of woke companies if you're not if you don't necessarily care about all that stuff it's quite hard to run them objectively um with some eye on maybe making it fair or whatever it's just difficult i just seen it in real time it's really interesting to see it kind of play out and then of course we got the update here courtesy of ali sorry um, al jazeera it says musk halts the twitter coveted blue tick as imposters run amok so now you can't get a blue tick even if you want it um that's going to be put on hold for the time being because obviously people took advantage of it and messed up the entire thing for everybody else so you have to kind of wait to see what things they put in place in terms of security um checks to make sure people can't go around impersonating Lockheed Martin and affecting their stock price or whatever else that flipping insulin company was and what happened to them so it's clearly an issue that's kind of driving it and of course we've got an article here from Twitter from New York Times that's clearly enjoying what's happening here with Elon Musk saying a verifiable mess Twitter uh, users create havoc by impersonating brands and it probably will go from bad to worse really you know until it gets better but I'll be curious to see how it works and it will be a victory for him if he ends up with making it work honestly if he ends up kind of figuring out how to make this um thing function and make it make money in terms of twitter whether it's a subscription whether it's other things he should get a big round of applause because he's running into a lot of interference um he's running into a lot of obstacles he's having to you know convince people that don't like him to give him a chance the media are already on his back like it's very very difficult in real time and maybe in general also another point to make he might just not be that good of a flipping business guy that's another thing also you're seeing in real time like to be an actual operator like a business owner to be a boss to be someone that can do things because i think these sort of things are similar to people that go around and buy struggling companies and then try and fix them and make them profitable and then try and flip them again that's not a skill that all entrepreneurs have or all businessmen have i think that's something that either have it or you don't or you have a you know you have a aptitude for it i'd imagine so maybe you know starting up a starting up a company like spacex from scratch or from tesla from scratch is one thing but going into an already established company like a twitter and trying to make that work with all its you know social and political leanings is not as easy as people would think it would be and let's also put this into you know into the record he didn't buy twitter he was forced to buy it right he kind of put a bid in kind of trolly kind of not um he didn't like what he saw when he did a due diligence or maybe got cold feet tried to pull out of it and the courts forced him to go through with the deal so this is probably something that he never wanted in the first place after you know maybe sobering up and now he's got it and it's, it's it sounds like it's an absolute mess basically and it probably won't get any better until he really 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 gets his feet under the table but how long will that take will they survive by then will they have enough cash flow to sustain it we don't know man we don't know because even i read the other day about the whole issue they're having with um working from home stuff a lot of people are saying that that essentially is illegal because some of the people that started there had in their contract that they could work from home it's like a it's like something they're basically entitled to as part of their contract so there is totally Elon basically has no leg to stand on legally to force them to all work from the office because he said in his thing you know you're not allowed to work from home if it's not what's that thing called no, you're, allowed to, you're only allowed to work from home if there's an if there's a valid exception can you work from home but for the most part if you have means to get to the office you have to get to the office but if you worked under twitter for a while and you've always been a work from home person as an as a remote worker then you, you know you're not going to stand for it and he's already having to you know butt his head up against that which is a big issue so i can't imagine how he's going to deal with it but let's i'm eager to watch it from afar i really am